Hello, my name is Paula and I'm an occupational therapist from Tala University Hospital. Today I'm going to talk to you about carpal tunnel syndrome. What is it? What are the symptoms and causes? How do we assess and diagnose it? And within occupational therapy, what hand therapy can we provide to you? We'll talk about splinting, modifying activity and exercises that might help. So what is carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal refers to the area at the base of your hand, so where these colourful bones are seen in the picture, the area where your hand meets your wrist. On the palm side, there's a tunnel or a covered passageway in which tendons, nerves and blood vessels travel, as you can see in the picture on the bottom left. So why is the median nerve important? Well, it's one of the three nerves that controls your hand and it primarily controls the thumb muscles and detects sensations felt in your thumb and fingers and brings this information back to your brain. The picture on your left shows the nerve traveling into the small muscles in your hand and the picture on the right shows the area of your hand in gray where your sensation is controlled by the median nerve. So thinking about all that information, an official definition of carpal tunnel syndrome is that it is caused by pressure on the median nerve. The carpal tunnel is a narrow passageway surrounded by bones and ligaments on the palm side of your hand. When the median nerve is compressed, the symptoms can include numbness, tingling and weakness in the hand and arm. So these are the typical symptoms and some of them may sound familiar to you. Pain and aching, tingling or numbness, feeling weak, muscle wasting where the muscle is not as firm or fat as it was before. You may find you're dropping things. You may notice that activities that need fine finger movement are more difficult. It's usually worse in the thumb, index middle fin and middle finger, but may feel like the whole hand. It tends to be worse at night time and it can come on with certain activities like typing, writing or housework. So why these symptoms? Well, basically, if you think of that covered passageway that we talked about, when the nerve gets squashed, trapped or stretched within that passageway, the signal is interrupted. So if you think of your garden hose, if it's stood on, the flow of water is interrupted, or if somebody puts a bend in it, the flow of water is interrupted. Similar to your electricity supply in your house, if it's cut at one point, the signal no longer travels beyond that point. And it's important that we try to relieve the pins and needles in your hand because long-term damage can be caused if the pressure is not relieved. So it's important to think about what positions you might adopt during the day that would cause this pressure or stretching on the nerve. And it's often just the normal everyday things that we do. So sitting with our arms folded, with our wrists either bent or stretched, spending time holding our phone to our ear with an extended wrist, or working at your keyboard with a bend in your wrist for a prolonged period of time. You may ask, why me? Why am I affected by carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, in most cases, there's no obvious cause. Risk factors may include any form of arthritis affecting the wrist, and this can often be because of bony changes and inflammation around the wrist. Hormone changes, for example, is quite common in pregnancy. Conditions such as an underactive thyroid and diabetes are linked with an increased risk of carpal tunnel syndrome. Previous fracture to the wrist, or work which puts heavy demands on your wrists. How do we diagnose it? Well, usually it's just by listening to your symptoms, looking at your hand and wrist and looking at where you're telling us you're having these symptoms. We can do physical tests or specific movements that can help us to diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome. And sometimes your medical team may send you for special tests like nerve conduction tests or ultrasound to help with the diagnosis. These are examples of some of the movements that we may get you to perform to help us to figure out if your problem is being caused by carpal tunnel syndrome. 
When you have carpal tunnel syndrome, there's a few different things that may have to happen. Generally, if your symptoms are pretty new, they're mild, moderate, you'll be sent for hand therapy within the occupational therapy department. And there we'll talk to you about managing your symptoms, splinting, exercise and adapting your tasks. If that doesn't improve your symptoms, so if they're persistent or if your symptoms are quite severe, then you'll be seen at the doctor's clinic where they may discuss with you the suitability of injection or surgery for your carpal tunnel. So within occupational therapy, we provide hand therapy, which aims to primarily help you to understand your carpal tunnel syndrome, to make sure that you're not uh, repeating activities that are aggravating it, to help you to reduce your symptoms. Physically, we're trying to relieve pressure on the median nerve to reduce that pins and needles that are numbness, to keep your hand functioning and to keep you as strong and independent as possible. We do that through education, splinting, exercises, ergonomics or looking at your environment and adapting your positions or adapting the tasks that you're involved in. One of the first things that we will do is provide you with a wrist brace for your carpal tunnel syndrome. And the wrist brace has a metal bar on the palm side and it's adapted so that it supports your wrist in a flat position, leaving as much space in the carpal tunnel as possible so that that median nerve is not getting squashed or stretched. We'll ask you to wear it overnight for six weeks. For some people, depending on your symptoms, we may get you to wear it during the day. And in some cases, we may replace the metal bar with a plastic bar. We'll provide you with written instructions so if you have any problems with the brace, refer to those. And if you still have any difficulties, contact your occupational therapist. We'll also give you some simple exercises to keep the tendons and the nerves moving within the tunnel. We'll ask you to complete them three times every day. They should be very simple to do, should be comfortable, not painful. And again, we'll give you a written instruction sheet when we meet you within occupational therapy. The first exercises are to keep the tendon moving within your carpal tunnel. So this is a sequence of five movements. You start with your fingers stretched up straight, move them into a hooked position, then roll down into a full fist, then stretch your fingers out straight in a flat position, and then you bring your fingertips down to touch your palm with your nails showing. And again, you'll have an instruction sheet with these pictures in your pack. The second set of exercises are to keep the nerve moving within your carpal tunnel. So you start with a closed fist and a, and a bent thumb. Next, you straighten your fingers and straighten your thumb. Then you bend your wrist backwards. Then you stretch your thumb out to the side. Then you turn your hand so your palm is up to the ceiling. And then using your other hand, you gently stretch your thumb backwards. We'll also talk to you about ergonomics or avoiding positions and activities that aggravate your symptoms. These will be different for everybody and may depend on your home situation or your work situation. But generally, the things that aggravate carpal tunnel are repetitive movements or spending long periods of time with your wrist bent up or down. Any tight fisted activities like maybe tight gripping of tools, tight twisting grips, such as wringing out a cloth or repetitive finger opening and closing. So once you are aware of what aggravates your symptoms, then we'll work with you to help you to try to do something different. And this can sometimes be as simple as changing position. So, for example, lots of people will tell us that holding a book or a phone for a long period of time can aggravate the numbness in their hands. So instead of sitting with the book in a static posture, you could use a gadget to clip the book open or a book stand to clip the book open so that it becomes a hands free activity. 
Similarly, instead of holding your phone to your ear, use your earphones or put your phone on loudspeaker or use voice notes instead of texting out long messages. You can also do something different by adapting the task. So reduce the length of time that you're doing the activity that's aggravating your symptoms. Pace yourself, do the job in two batches rather than all in one go. Rotate your tasks or jobs across the day or across the week so that your hands are not getting the same repetitive pressure all the time. If there are tasks that you're doing that are unnecessary or not important, can you avoid them altogether or can you delegate them to somebody in the workplace or at home? And also use clever shortcuts, for example, rather than chopping veg from scratch, if you're going to batch cook, use frozen chopped vegetables to make the job easier. Try to be as clever as possible when you're doing your activities. So if you're using a piece of equipment or a tool, either adapt or build up the handle or choose a more ergonomic handle. For example, on a particular tool, something that's a wider, more non-slip handle, puts less pressure through your fingers and your hands while you're using it. Always use the best tool for the job. So the sharpest scissors, reuse your secateurs in the garden and use clever equipment for example, jar opener, a mini chopper in the kitchen will provide you with some Dyson non-slip mat to help you get a better grip on, on items that you're trying to open or hold and keep an eye out in shops and supermarkets. There's lots of clever equipment that may make the tasks that you do every day that little bit easier. If relevant to you, we will look at your workstation or your work tasks. And on this slide, you can see there's some general advice about good posture when you're working at a computer or sitting at a desk. So we'll try to put all of that in place so that your nerve is getting the least amount of irritation during the repetitive work day. So following on from you watching this video today, your occupational therapist will be in touch to schedule a face to face appointment where you can come and meet us. We'll be able to answer any questions that you may have from the information you received today. We'll fit you with your splints and practice your exercises with you and discuss any specific problems you encounter with daily tasks in relation to your carpal tunnel syndrome. Two weeks after that, we will do a telephone call with you to check how you're getting on with the treatment. And then at the six week mark, we'll get you back into the department to see how your treatment has progressed over the six weeks. We've included some useful links to good information about carpal tunnel syndrome, if you'd like to read a little bit more about it. Finally, we would just like to thank KOS Ergonomics and Versus Arthritis for use of their pictures within today's presentation and also to the Medical Photography Department and the Communications Department in Tally University Hospital. We hope you found today's information useful and we look forward to meeting you at your next appointment within the Occupational Therapy Department.